attributed to me in the press. First, the press has con consistently asked Commissioner of Police Francois to explain my statement that government has operational control of the police force. Clearly, he is being asked to answer something I never said. What I did say was that no government has so ingratiated itself into the operations of the force as has the current administration. That is far different from operational control. Second, there is the matter of a, promotion, a promotions list. I became aware that such a list had been prepared in much the same way that one had been prepared and sent to former Commissioner Osbert Regis. In the current scenario, there is apparently a problem relating to one promotion which is now standing in the way of all other promotions. I say only that it is that problem which has delayed the forwarding of the list to the Commissioner. Thirdly, the statement relating to the passing of sensitive police information. It did happen when a well-meaning police officer divulged the information to a very prominent citizen who in turn compromised it. That out of the way, I move on to what we are here for. As difficult as have been the past few days, and I will tell you in a while how surreal they have been, nothing was as sad as how one member of the media chose to play this story. I have been informed that he has suggested I owe a duty to either come forward and explain or speak to the police commissioner. How he knew I had not done the latter continues to elude me. First, he has never telephoned, either to express support or to seek clarification. And even if the commissioner may have himself called upon me to come see him, how did Mr. Timothy Polia know, never mind the commissioner's comments, that I had not in fact done so, and that the commissioner, for strategic reasons, chose not to publicly acknowledge that? Isn't that even remotely possible? But he wouldn't know, because he never called. It was not too long ago when he too had his own devil to confront, following serious allegations he had made about the OECS Director General. Even though Ms. Ishmael continuously denied the allegations, and just as continuously and strenuously demanded a retraction, Mr. Polio was equally adamant and stood by his story. None in the media, including me, challenged Mr. Polio to support his allegations publicly. None of us demanded accountability from him. We left him and the story alone, reasoning that in due course, and when he was ready, he would place before us all that he had. But is that how he treated me? I dare say no. I don't ask for any special favors, but it is my humble view, at least. He treated me almost like a liar. It is not something I will easily forget. Last Wednesday, at the top of the Straight Up Show, I read from a prepared text informing listeners that consequent upon certain events, including text messages I had received the Sunday before and earlier in the year in April, I was considering giving up the show altogether. I gave several reasons for this, as I said, among them certain text messages. These texts had followed others I had received previously. Together, they convinced me that freedom of expression in our dear country was under serious threat. That was Wednesday. The following morning, I went out of town on assignment. While in one of the southern villages, I received a call from the police. To cut a long story short, following that call, I immediately drove to police headquarters where I met with Commissioner Francois and other senior members of the police force. What I was told by them was chilling. I was told that information reaching them indicated that a very prominent citizen had paid a sum of money to get me out of the way. As a result of the information reaching the police, certain measures were immediately implemented. Subsequently, 
my own sources confirm what the police had said to me, including names. I want members of the media to note that it was not me who told the police, that it was the police who called me to ask where I was and to report to headquarters. That we have reached a stage where criticisms of individuals in high office warrants one's execution is a frightening thought. That said, at least two international agencies have expressed keen interest in this matter and have contacted me and are themselves conducting inquiries to act if necessary. The United States television networks have been calling me incessantly over the weekend. Tempted as I was to speak with them, I decided to hold my peace and speak instead, first of all, to my local colleagues. So, I have since last week lived life almost in a bubble. But I have survived. Thanks, first and foremost, to the Almighty God. Second, the wonderful work by our hard-working and dedicated police officers. Third, my family and friends have been supportive. People I don't even know, text, prayers, and words of encouragement. One female who told me she was close to 70 telephoned me and asked me to listen in the background as a prayer meeting was taking place in Saltibus. I was visibly moved, I can tell you. So I want to thank all of you who have given me words of encouragement. But we need to go further. This is, after all, not just about me. This is about the right to free speech in a supposedly democratic country. And every one of you here who writes stories are now at risk. We must therefore ensure that all is done to bring those who wish to commit this act to justice, no matter how high their station. I have been reliably informed that Prime Minister King and Home Affairs Minister Mayors have both been briefed on the police investigations, and I look forward to their actions in that regard. I learned much these last few days, especially who are really your friends, as opposed to those who call you and immediately call the other party, feeding them information. Thankfully, I have been most guarded in what I have said to certain individuals. That approach has evidently served me well, as the other is still unclear about the depth of the information in our possession. Conclusion, I thank once more all those who have prayed for and supported me during this ordeal, even though they have had no idea how serious the situation is. And again, I want to thank all of you who there, not all of you who there, telephoned me, but I, I know from third-party sources that I was in your thoughts. Thank you very much, Charles. Let me take a few questions. There's not much information I'll give to compromise the investigation. It's an ongoing investigation. But I'll take one or two questions if you're so minded. I prefer if you didn't ask any questions. <laughs> uh, uh, Michael Jordan.